I have a word from God for your life, a prayer for your life. Let's praise Psalm 91, which is the psalm of divine protection, and may God protect, guard, and deliver our lives. Follow this prayer until the end because God will bless you abundantly and powerfully, protecting, prospering, and blessing you in all areas of your life. Psalm 9-1 is one of the most well-known psalms in the Bible, and through this psalm, we can find God's answers for our lives, relief for our souls, deliverance for us and our families. Psalm 91 has 16 verses, and we will be reading and praying based on this psalm, and divine protection will come to your home. Please also share your prayer requests in the comments of this video. I will present your prayer requests to God. Comment below with your prayer request. It doesn't matter how simple or important your prayer request is. God answers everything, from the smallest to the impossible things. God has the power to do the supernatural. So make your prayer request. If you know a family member or friend who needs to hear this psalm, share it with them. Perhaps this psalm will enrich their soul and strengthen their spirit because blessings need to be shared among brothers and sisters. So let us pray. Psalm 91 Verse 1 says, He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. This first verse shows us a divine promise for you and me, a spiritual promise for our lives. The text is very clear in saying, he who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. In this verse, we see some mysteries of God and important things for our lives and protection. Notice that the text says, He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High. Who is the Most High being referred to here? It is God Himself, the Almighty God. And who is this person who dwells in the secret place of the Most High? This person is me. And it's you, and it's you. This person who hides in the secret place is us. We are guarded in the secret place of the Most High. This means that our adversaries cannot see us, cannot perceive us, because we are hidden in God. We are protected in God. God is protecting your home, your family, your work, your business, your children. Everything is under divine protection. That's why the text also says, shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. In other words, I, you, we who are hidden in the secret place of the Most High, can rest in the shadow of the Almighty, and in that shadow, we find rest. The Bible says that the people of Israel walked through the desert, and the desert sun was scorching, extremely hot. So, to prevent the people from dying in the middle of the desert, God would send a shadow where the people of Israel could rest peacefully. This shadow represents the rest of God for our lives, for our souls. Therefore, rest in the Lord. Don't be anxious about anything in this life. Simply rest. Because God is watching over you. God is protecting you. You are in the safest place in the universe. You are in the secret place of the Most High. Verse 2 says, I will say of the Lord, He is my God, my refuge, and my fortress, in Him I will trust. Look at this beautiful and impactful verse 2. It says, I will say of the Lord. You can say to God, you know what you can say to God. You can say that He is your God, that He is your refuge, that He is your fortress, and you will trust in Him. Notice that the psalmist says that God is a refuge and fortress. In other words, you can take refuge in Him. He is a fortress because He guards you. The prophet Isaiah asked, Can a mother forget her? Nursing child, those who are listening to me, whether you are a mother or a daughter, you know very well how a mother protects her child when someone wants to harm them. See, this mother guards, 
she protects. I am sure that as a mother, if someone tries to harm your child, you become fierce. You don't let anyone touch your children. It's the same with God. In the book of Isaiah, he says that even if a mother, even if a mother who has an almost divine love, even if this mother were to forget her child, the Lord your God will never forget you. And the text also says that we are in the palm of God's hand, and the walls surround us, and what are these walls? These walls are the fortress, the protection, the angels of the Lord guarding our lives. Hey, you are in the refuge. You are in the fortress, in the shadow of the Almighty. No harm, no plague, no curse can come against your life because you are secure. You are safe in the shadow of God's omnipotence. Verse 3 tells us, I am reading verse by verse and explaining each verse of Psalm 91. And verse 3 says, Surely he shall deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the perilous pestilence. Look, this verse is beautiful. God is assuring us that he will deliver us from the snare of the fowler. Have you ever hunted birds? It may sound ironic, but it's true. The text says, He shall deliver you from the snare of the fowler. Those who have hunted birds know very well how it works. To catch a bird, you need to set a snare, a trap. To capture that bird, to ensnare it. And the helpless bird usually falls into these traps, these snares. God is saying that we are like helpless birds. But when the enemy sets the traps, the snare of the fowler, who is the helpless bird? It is us. The enemy sets bird snares to catch us. That's why Peter says that Satan walks around like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. So the enemy sets the snares of the fowler. But in verse 3 of Psalm 91, God makes us a promise, and the promise is that he will deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the perilous pestilence. Perilous pestilence refers to the forces of evil, the harmful plagues. God will deliver us from these harmful plagues and from the snare of the fowler. In the name of Jesus, I prophesy that every snare of the fowler and every trap the enemy has set against your life at this moment is now broken in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. God undoes every snare of the fowler against your home, your family, your spouse, your children, your relatives, brothers, and friends. Every snare of the fowler that brings sickness, every snare of the fowler that hinders your business, that hinders your financial life. Now, at this moment, we rebuke in the name of Jesus every snare and declare it broken against your life, your home, your family, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Receive God's deliverance in your life. You can say, Amen. Verse 4 of Psalm 91 says, He shall cover you with his feathers, and under his wings you shall take refuge, his truth shall be your shield and buckler. In this verse 4, God is assuring us that he will cover us with his feathers. How can that be, God? Does he have feathers? Because here in Psalm 91, God is representing himself as a mother. Eagle, and the mother eagle takes her eaglets and places them under her feathers. Are you an eaglet? God is the mother eagle who guards the eaglets, and the mother eagle spreads her wings and places her eaglets beneath her wings. That's why verse 4 is saying that he, God, will cover you with his feathers, and under his wings, the wings of this eagle called God, you will be safe, and God's truth is your shield and buckler, your protection that blocks the attacks of the enemy. That's why Jesus said, You shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. God's truth is a shield for our lives. Verse 5 says, You shall not be afraid of them. Terror by night, nor of the arrow that flies by day. Notice that the text says we will not fear the terror by night. Generally, the forces of evil 
Entities Notice that in macabre rituals, the forces of evil usually ask for sacrifices to be made at night, at midnight. However, midnight is not the devil's hour. The devil doesn't have a specific hour, all hours belong to God. The day, the afternoon, the night belong to God. Satan simply likes to imitate the things of God. He likes to transgress the things of God. And notice that evil entities usually ask for offerings, sacrifices during the night, at midnight. But we can see in the Bible that many miracles happened at midnight. The Red Sea parted at midnight. Paul and Silas prayed and sang at midnight, and there was an earthquake, and they were set free. The Bible says that at midnight the bridegroom called, and the virgins, the brides, responded to the bridegroom. In other words, several Bible verses talk about miracles happening at midnight. So, midnight is not the devil's hour. However, the enemy likes to imitate God. That's why he asks for wicked deeds to be done at midnight. But in verse 5, God is showing us the following, you shall not be afraid of the terror by night. God is telling us here not to fear, not to be afraid of the works of evil. I often receive messages from people who are terrified of wicked deeds that have been done against them. And I always present this psalm because we don't need to fear the works of evil. Why? Because the one who is with us is greater than the army, greater than the navy, greater than the air force, greater than hell, greater than the angels, greater than the universe. The one who is with us is the Almighty, the one who dwells in the hiding place of the Most High, of the Omnipotent. You can rest assured. So, do not be afraid because you are protected by God. Take hold of this protection. Keep this word in your heart, you shall not fear, for I will not fear the terror by night. I will not fear the terror by night because I dwell in the hiding place of the Most High and in the shadow of the Omnipotent. I can rest. Because He is our fortress, and we have Him as our refuge. For this reason, we do not fear the terror by night or the arrow that flies by day because the enemy does not only work at night. Verse 5 clearly shows us that we will not fear the terror by night or the arrow that flies by day. What does it represent? What does the arrow that flies by day mean? The arrow that flies by day represents the wicked attacks that happen during the day. However, we do not need to fear. Why? Because God is our refuge and fortress. When you experience fear, it means you are not trusting in divine protection. Because the text clearly shows us that He is our shield and stronghold, that He guards us under the shadow of His wings. So why fear? What is the purpose of fear? Do not be afraid. The Bible says in the book of Isaiah that no weapon formed against you shall prosper, and every tongue that rises against you in judgment you shall condemn. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord. In other words, you have 24-7 protection. Jesus made us a promise, saying, Behold, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. You have divine protection in your life. Do not be afraid. Let's continue. Verse 6. Nor of the pestilence that walks in darkness, nor of the destruction that lays waste at noonday. Here, the psalmist is still talking about the works of evil, the forces of darkness. Verses 5 and 6 are closely related. You shall not fear the terror by night, nor the arrow that flies by day, nor the pestilence that walks in darkness. These are demons that roam in the darkness, nor the destruction that lays waste at noonday. In other words, God is telling us not to fear the forces of evil. I don't understand how a Christian can fear the forces of evil. 
You cannot fear the forces of evil because greater is he who is with us than he who is in the world. Amen. Verse 7 is a well. Known verse and it says, A thousand may fall at your side, and ten thousand at your right hand, but it shall not come near you. Look. The psalmist is saying that even if a battalion, even if an army of demons, of evil forces, falls at your side, falls at your right hand. Nothing will happen to you. Why? Because you are protected. This is the protection of God, my sister, my brother. Verse 7. Let me read it again because this verse is so beautiful. A thousand may fall at your side, and ten thousand at your right hand. But it shall not come near you. Did you understand? You are protected by God. Nothing can touch a single hair of yours if you believe with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength in God's promise recorded in this Psalm 91. A thousand may fall at your side, and ten thousand at your right hand, but you will not. You will not be affected because God is with you. Say Amen. Say, I claim this. Word for myself. Verse 8. Only with your eyes shall you look, and see the reward of the wicked. In this text, God is telling us through. The psalmist that while we rest, while we receive God's protection and deliverance, we will witness the reward of the wicked, God's judgment. Upon the wicked. We will see with our own eyes God's justice being done. Verse 9. Psalm 91 says, Because you have made the Lord. Who is my refuge, even the Most High, your dwelling place? Look, the text reinforces what was said in verse 1 and verse 2, reminding us once again that God is our refuge, and in the Most High, we can dwell. Amen. Now, verse 10 says, No evil shall befall you, nor shall any plague come near your dwelling. Let me repeat because this verse is too beautiful. Glory. No evil shall befall you. What is God saying to you? Nothing will happen to you because I protect you, I guard you, I deliver you, I defend you. God is not saying that two or three or four or five evils will happen in your life. God is not saying that all the evils will happen in your life. No, no, no. God is saying that no, absolutely no evil shall befall you. No evil shall befall you. It means that nothing will happen to you because God protects you. But you need to believe with all your heart, trust in God with all your soul, knowing that He guards and defends you, that He is your help, your refuge, your fortress. No evil shall befall you, and no plague shall come near your dwelling. Hey, your dwelling is protected. The north of your dwelling is protected. There are angels of God spread around. The north of your dwelling, in the south of your dwelling, in the east, in the west, in the four corners around your dwelling, on the roof of your dwelling. God is sending mighty angels now to your dwelling. Mighty angels, guardian angels, angels of God, mighty in battle, are being sent at this very moment to protect, to guard, to deliver your dwelling because that's what angels are for. Angels are divine protectors, and they are surrounding your dwelling to protect your life right now. Feel peace in your soul. Feel peace in your heart. There are angels of God surrounding your dwelling, protecting your life in the name of Jesus. No evil shall befall you, nor shall any plague come. Near your dwelling, your family, the lives of your children, the life of your husband, the life of your wife, your work, your friends, your colleagues, your classmates. No harm will come to you because God is protecting you. Amen. Say Amen. Comment below. Amen. Verse 11. Tells us why. 
because he will command his angels concerning you to guard you in all your ways. This verse 11 is so beautiful. God is saying that the angels of the Lord will guard us in all our ways. Do you know what this means? When you go to the bakery, the angels are guarding you. When you go to the bank, to the lottery, the angels are guarding you. When you go to the mall, the angels are guarding you. When you go to church, the angels are guarding you. That's why the text says that he will command his angels concerning you to guard you in all your ways. Verse 11. So, all your ways are guarded by God. Rest, trust. Be at peace. Now, there is a caveat. Jesus said, you shall not put the Lord your God to the test. Of course, if you see a deserted street, you're not going to test God and say, God is guarding me, so I'll pass through here recklessly, imprudently, and God will protect me. God guards us when we are in accordance with His will, right? Don't stray from the Lord's will, don't stray from the Father's will. Stand firm in the will of Jesus and be prudent. There are many people who may say, since God is guarding me, I'll accelerate the car to over 100 kilometers per hour, and God will protect me, right? Negative. God will protect us, but we also have to be prudent. We have to be vigilant. God protects, but we have to do our part as well. When Satan told Jesus to jump from the pinnacle, Satan quoted this verse to Jesus, saying that the angels would protect and guard Jesus so that he would not strike his foot against a stone. But Jesus said to Satan, You shall not put the Lord your God to the test. In other words, we have divine protection. God guards us with his angels in all our ways, but that doesn't mean we shouldn't be watchful, on the contrary, we must also be vigilant. The street is deserted. Avoid passing through the deserted street. Are you hearing news of crime in a particular area? Avoid going through there because God provides greater protection. We need to be prudent. That being said, let's move on to the next verse, verse 11. For he will command his angels concerning you to guard you in all your ways. Verse 12 says, they will bear you up in their hands, lest you strike your foot against a stone. God is saying here that the angels will provide protection for us in the smallest details. Yes, we have divine protection. When human resources run out, God's resources arrive. If there is no human alternative, then God's alternatives come into play. Understand this, if there are no other possibilities and you have to pass through that place, then God will guard you. But if there is a possibility for you to be vigilant and make a better choice, then we cannot test the Lord our God. However, God is giving us the assurance that He will guard us, even in the smallest details. When the text says that the angels will guard you, so that you do not strike your foot against a stone, it means that God will protect you in every aspect of life. Amen. Next verse, verse 13, says, You will tread on the lion and the adder, the young lion and the serpent you will trample underfoot. This text helps us understand what Jesus said in Luke chapter 10 when he sent out the seventy disciples on a mission. The story is narrated in Luke chapter 10. Jesus gave them power and authority. He said, Behold, I give you the authority to trample on serpents and scorpions, and over all the power of the enemy, Satan, the forces of evil. In verse 13 of Psalm 91, the lion and the venomous serpent are being described. And God is saying that we will tread upon the lion and the serpent, we will trample them underfoot. But the serpent will be under the feet of the son or the son of the lion. God is saying that we will tread upon the lion and the serpent. Why is the enemy depicted in the Bible as a lion? 
Even Peter says, Satan walks about like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. The word Satan is a Greek word and means serpent. In the Garden of Eden, the enemy presented himself to Eve in the form of a serpent. So Satan is the false lion because the true lion is Jesus, the lion of the tribe of Judah. But God is saying that he will grant us spiritual authority to trample upon the works of evil. This means that God is saying, I am giving you authority to overcome the forces of evil. Treading upon the forces of evil represents that you will tread upon the lion, the serpent, you will put your feet upon the offspring of the lion, the serpent. Verse 13 is stating that God will give us spiritual authority to crush, tread upon, overthrow, and undo the forces of evil. Verse 14 says, Because he has set his love upon me, therefore will I deliver him, I will set him on high because he has known my name. This verse is God speaking to us, saying what? Because he has set his love upon me, meaning because we have loved God, because we love the Lord. For this reason, because of this love we have for God, God is saying that because of this love, he will also deliver us, set us on high. Because we know his name. These are the privileges of loving God, of having a friendship relationship with the Creator. When we are friends with God, we have in Him our refuge, our strength, our spiritual protection 24-7. Verse 15 says, He shall call upon me, and I will answer him, I will be with him in trouble, I will deliver him, and honor him. God is guaranteeing to us in verse 15 that when we call upon His name, He will answer us. He will be with us in times of trouble, He will deliver us, and He will honor us. God is giving us the assurance that in moments of anguish, we will not be alone. Even though moments of anguish may seem dark, even though they may seem lonely, devastating, God is there, guarding our lives. And what about that story we all know about the footprints in the sand? A man walking on the sand saw the scenes of his life in the sky. And as he walked on the sand, he saw two sets of footprints, his own and Jesus' footprints, depicting the most beautiful moments of his life. And suddenly, as the scenes changed and the saddest moments of his life began to appear, only two footprints were seen in the sand. Then the man said to God, In the moments when I needed you the most, Lord, you left me alone. Then God says, No, those footprints in the sand are not yours, they are mine. So he asks, and where are my footprints? Then God says, those footprints are mine. Yours. Didn't appear because at that moment I was carrying you in my arms, meaning that in times of distress, God is carrying us in his arms. That's why Jesus said, who needs a doctor, the saint or the sick? So Jesus came for the sick. If you are tired and burdened, God can relieve you, and receive relief for your distress, relief for your soul, and peace in your spirit in the name of Jesus at this moment. And verse 16 concludes Psalm 91, saying, With long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. When the text says, With long life will I satisfy him, God is giving us the promise that we will have a long life, that we will have an abundance of days. Long life to those who love the Lord. Long life to those who trust in God. Long life to those who have God as their refuge, to those who have God as their friend. Long life to those who seek the face of God. And God says more, I will give you long life, abundance of days. And I won't stop there. I will give even more. I will give my salvation to those who love me, says the Lord. These are the blessings. The blessings of Psalm 91 are 16 verses, and here we have read verse by verse, explaining each one. A blessing, isn't it? Comment down below. 
In the comments what you thought of the explanation of each verse of Psalm 91. Share it with a friend. Some people read Psalm 91 and don't understand, but through this explanation, you were able to understand verse by verse. If you have any questions, comment below, and I will be reading. Amen. If possible, I will be reading. If there are many comments, it may take me a while to read, but I will make an effort to read the comments. So leave your prayer requests because we are going to pray now. Hold on, the video is not over yet. We are going to pray. Now I want to pray the prayer of Psalm 91 because the first step was for you to understand Psalm 91. Now that you understand the meaning of each word of Psalm 91, let us now, based on what we have read, what we have learned, pray, pray asking. God for the blessings of Psalm 91 in our lives. Wherever you are, close your eyes. If you can, leave your prayer requests in the comments, and let us pray with faith because the prayer of faith will save the sick. The prayer of faith will heal the afflicted. The prayer of faith will open doors of employment. The prayer of faith will make supernatural. Miracles happen in our lives. Close your eyes with me and let us pray in this moment. Holy Spirit of Truth, Almighty God, Omniscient, Omnipresent, and Creator of Heaven and Earth. You are Lord in the heavens, you are Lord in the seas. You are the Lord of the stars. You are the Lord of the universe. We invoke your name, O Most High God. God who reveals himself in Psalm 91. You are the Most High, our Divine Protection. And we ask for your blessing, O Lord, in our lives. Your grace manifested, Holy Spirit of Truth. I present the life of this woman who listens to me. The life of this man who listens to me. God, through this prayer, come, Lord, pour out your power, your grace, your anointing, your virtue, your strength. Come and grant spiritual strength to your people. Come and baptize with your spirit, renew spiritual forces, energies. God, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, send your cloud, your protection, your glory, your power, your love, O Almighty God. Forgive, O Lord, the sins of your people. Forgive all iniquity. Come, Lord, cleanse our soul, our spirit, forgiving. Our faults, our weaknesses committed through thoughts or feelings, actions, and gestures. Everything, Lord, that has been disapproved by you, everything, Lord, that has displeased and saddened your Holy Spirit, and that we have spoken, thought, or done. We ask for forgiveness at this hour. Forgive us with your precious blood, Lord, Cleanse our altar, cleanse our garments, making them whiter than snow. God, in the name of Jesus, come, Lord, with your power, come and restore marriages, come and restore relationships, come and restore families. God, we ask you, Lord, for all the people who are homeless, for all the people who have lost their loved ones in tragedies. Come and guard, come and deliver. Come and protect in the name of Jesus, sending your provision. Sending your mercy. Give, Lord, deliverance to your people. God, we do not fully understand your will, but we do not surrender to your will, asking for your mercy, asking, O oh God, for your peace over Brazil, over the world. Come and rebuke wars, come and rebuke conflicts. Come and bring your peace, Lord, into families, come and restore, God, in the name of Jesus, the financial life of your people, bless the sentimental life of your church, bless in the life, Lord, of this woman who listens to me, who hears me. Come and restore the sentimental life, the financial life, the family life in all areas of her life, of his life. Come and bring health, come and bring peace. 
If there is any illness, place your hand on your illness. If there is someone who is sick in your family, place your hands on the illness in the name of Jesus. Pray these words with me in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Every illness, leave now, disappear now, vanish now in the name of Jesus. God, in the name of Jesus, heal the illnesses. Now, in the name of Jesus, you are the God of Psalm 91. The Most High, our refuge, our stronghold, and we trust in you. Deliver us from evil, deliver us from evil. O God, protect our house from the violent man, the bloodthirsty man, the corrupt man. God, deliver. Lord, the house of your servant, the house of your servant from all evil. In the name of Jesus, guard our lives under your mighty hand. Under your protection, under your blessing, Lord. Release upon us the blessings of Psalm 91, may each verse of Psalm 91 be fulfilled in our lives, guarding us, delivering us, protecting us, defending us, granting us, Lord, abundance of days, long life for our lives, long life with health, with prosperity in the name of Jesus. Receive now, you who are listening to me, you who are hearing me, woman of God, man of God, who is listening to me at this moment. Receive health in your body, receive prosperity in your life, financial prosperity, emotional prosperity, family prosperity, prosperity in all areas of your life. Receive now in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Amen and thanks be to God, say yes with me. I take possession of my victory. Repeat once again, I take possession of my victory. I take possession of my blessing. I take possession of my blessing, my victory, my prosperity. In the name of Jesus. Amen. May God bless your life. May God bless our lives, because if you are blessed, I am blessed too. When one wins, Everyone wins because we are the family of Jesus. Amen. And may the peace of the Lord be in your heart. May the blessings of Psalm 91 be in your home. Praise be to God, who grants us victory through the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. I extend my heartfelt greetings to all my brothers and sisters, with the holy and mighty peace of our Lord. May God bless your life, and may He bless your family in a special way. We will be praying the 23rd Psalm, the Shepherd's Psalm, one of the most well-known psalms in the Bible. This psalm will be a blessing for your life and your family. May God bless you as you listen to every word of this powerful psalm until the end, for each word of this psalm carries a blessing for you and your entire family. We will study verse by verse and pray through this powerful psalm. I have a special request for you, share this psalm with a friend, a loved one, or a family member. It will undoubtedly be a blessing in their life. Also, Subscribe to our channel and enable notifications to receive more prayers and psalms. Today, we will pray the 23rd Psalm, the Shepherd's Psalm. It is the most read and well-known psalm in the Bible, written by David. Verse 1 tells us, The Lord is my shepherd. This signifies a relationship. When the psalmist said that the Lord was his shepherd, he was expressing that God is the one who takes care of him, defends him, protects him, and keeps him safe. That's why he is my shepherd. When we observe the relationship between a shepherd and a sheep, we realize that the shepherd is willing to give his life for the sheep. And we are the sheep of God. The Lord is our shepherd, and this is the relationship God has with us. This is the intimacy we have with the Father. Remember that you are a sheep, and God is your shepherd. He takes care of you, 
protects you, defends you, and keeps you safe. The 23rd Psalm continues, I shall not want. This means that he will not fail me. In moments of struggle, he will be with me. I shall not want, means that he provides for me. He grants me my needs, whatever I require, he will supply. He is your shepherd, and you will lack nothing, absolutely nothing. He will supply your needs, so you shall not lack anything. He makes me lie down in green pastures, the phrase, he makes me lie down, means that he makes you rest, he gives you rest for your heart. In green pastures, means that this faithful shepherd carries us in his arms and places us in lush pastures. He makes us lie down, he makes us rest in a green and prosperous place. Green pastures symbolize prosperity. He makes you lie down in prosperity, he makes you happy in the arms of this faithful shepherd. He leads me beside quiet waters, this is the care of this shepherd. He gently guides me to calm waters. It is the Lord who guides you, directing your steps to make the right decisions in life. Don't worry because the one who takes care of you is the faithful shepherd, the good shepherd who leads you to calm waters. Quiet waters are a place of refreshment, a place of tranquility. This shows God's special care for us. The Apostle Peter said, Cast all your anxiety on him because he cares for you. The one who cares for you created the heavens and the earth, the sea and the stars, and he takes care of you in every detail. And he restores my soul, the 23rd Psalm revives my soul. This represents inner healing. Our soul is where all our feelings reside, all the emotions of our life are within our soul. If you feel sadness, it comes from the soul. If you feel anguish, it comes from the soul. If you feel joy, it comes from the soul. In other words, all the positive and negative emotions come from our soul, and the 23rd Psalm tells us that he restores our soul. To restore means to bring relief to your soul. If you, who are listening to me, have a troubled soul, a sad soul, a weary soul. The Good Shepherd is coming to meet you at this moment, refreshing your soul, bringing peace to your spirit, bringing peace to your life. Believe that He will restore your soul. The 23rd Psalm also says, He guides me along the right paths, this represents God's complete guidance. For those of you who are feeling lost, unsure of which path to take in life, whether to travel or stay, questioning if a relationship is from God or not, or contemplating whether you should remain in your current church, perhaps you have doubts in your heart and feel without God's guidance, let me minister to your heart and tell you this. He will guide you along the paths of righteousness. This is a promise from Psalm 23, He guides me along the right paths. In other words, the Lord will lead your steps towards what is just and right, so that you can make the right decisions. So, let the Good Shepherd guide you, the Shepherd of Psalm 23. The text continues, For His name's sake, He leads me in the paths of righteousness. For his name's sake, means the purpose of our lives is to glorify the name of the Lord. For his name's sake, means, I will do things in your life for the sake of my name. I will bless your financial life, your relationships, your family, and your health for the sake of my name, says the Lord. It is for the sake of this precious and powerful name that he will guide you. That's what the psalmist is saying. For the love of this beautiful and wonderful name, for the love of God's name, He will guide you along the paths of righteousness. The 23rd Psalm further states, Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, 
What does this valley of the shadow of death that David refers to represent? It represents trials, struggles, and adversity. That fight where you thought, I will die in this test, I will perish in this trial. Have you ever faced a similar situation where you thought you would perish in the midst of a struggle? Let me know in the comments if you have experienced the valley of the shadow of death, that trial, that adversity where you thought you would perish. But the psalmist is saying, Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, I will fear no evil represents faith. When we are going through the valley of the shadow of death, through the valleys of testing, anguish, struggles, and disappointments, we need to hold on to our faith. We need to believe with all our hearts that we will not perish or die because the one who is our shepherd is the way, the truth, and the life. He is the path that directs your steps, that illuminates your spirit. He is the life that rescues you from death. If you are going through a trial, make your prayer request because we will pray for you. This was the confidence of the psalmist, even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. For you are with me represents God's faithfulness to us. When the psalmist David said in Psalm 23, even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. I will fear no evil, for you are with me, it signifies God's faithfulness to us. Even when going through the valley of the shadow of death, God is with you. In Matthew chapter 28, Jesus said, Behold, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. From Monday to Sunday, God is with you to deliver you, protect you, guard you, restore you, and bless you. This confidence of the psalmist made him believe that even if he walked through the valleys of shadows and death, he would not fear. The one who is with you is greater than the valleys, greater than the struggles because the Lord is your shepherd. The expression, for you are with me, also refers to the shepherd's staff and rod. With the staff, the shepherd corrects, and with the rod, the shepherd pulls the sheep. In other words, whenever we, the sheep of Christ, are walking in the wrong path, he will use the rod to correct us and bring us back to the path of victory, the path of peace. That's why the psalmist, it says that your rod and your staff, they comfort me. In other words, they comfort me because they correct me, they correct me because they love me. Those of you who are mothers know very well, those of you who are fathers know very well, when you correct your child, you correct them because you love them. And the psalmist is saying, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. The staff was used for correction and protection, so as a sheep, in the position of a sheep, he is declaring to God that this protection of life, this protection of God, brings comfort to his soul. In Psalm 23, it says, In the presence of my enemies, which represents the honor and exaltation of God in your life. When the psalmist says, You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies, it's God telling you that he will honor you, not just in the presence of your friends, but in the presence of your enemies. This is not vengeance. This is divine justice because there is a difference between vengeance and justice. Vengeance is when you take matters into your own hands, but justice is when the hand of God acts in your favor. Your enemies, those who mock you, despise you, humiliate you, those who look at you with disdain, those who look down on you or up at you, those who scorn you. These are the people who will sit at the table and witness the honor of God in your life so that the name of God may be glorified. That's why the psalmist says, You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. God will honor you, exalt you, 
and prosper you, and those who mocked will have to applaud. Those who slandered will have to glorify and spread the good news that God honored your life and gave you victory. And the psalm goes even further, stating that anointing my head with oil represents consecration. One day, your mind, where thoughts reside, will be filled with thoughts of faith, thoughts of conviction. You will understand perfectly and clearly that God is guiding your life and that He is your faithful shepherd, guiding your steps. Anointing my head with oil represents the Lord consecrating your life, declaring that you are anointed by God. You are anointed, my Lord. And the psalm continues, My cup overflows, which represents God's prosperity in your life. God is saying, I will not only fill your cup, but I will cause it to overflow. Imagine when you pour water into a cup, it fills up, but if you leave the tap running, it will overflow. There will be water inside and water on the outside. And when you hold a cup that's overflowing, you can feel what's on the inside and what's on the outside. Here, God is saying that He will overflow your cup. In other words, you will receive abundance both internally and externally. You will have prosperity in your life. God doesn't want to merely fill your cup, He wants it to overflow. He wants to bless you abundantly, not just for your own benefit, but also to bless others. Just like a cup overflowing with water, you will experience an overflow of God's blessings, pouring into your life from within and spilling over to touch the lives of those around you. God's prosperity will be evident in every aspect of your life. He is saying, perceive that when you hold a cup overflowing, you can feel what's inside and what's outside. That's what I will do with your cup. You will receive overflowing blessings, both inwardly and outwardly. Your cup will not merely be filled, it will overflow. God wants to bless your life with abundance, not only for your own sake, but also to bless others. He wants to pour out His blessings upon you, filling your cup until it overflows. Open your heart and receive this promise. Declare with faith, Lord, you are my shepherd. Overflow in my life. Fill every area of my life with your prosperity and blessings. God desires to overflow in your home, your relationships, your finances, your health, and every aspect of your life. Embrace this promise and experience the overflowing goodness of God. In your life, there will be abundance, not only in your home but also to help your fellow human beings. Your table will be filled with plenty, not just for yourself but also for your friends and those in need. Your wardrobe will be abundant, providing for both yourself and those who require assistance. God will overflow, abundantly pouring out blessings. It signifies that you will have so much more, not just for yourself but also for others. God doesn't want to merely fill your cup, He wants it to overflow. He desires to make you prosper in every aspect of your life, financially, spiritually, materially, and in all ways. God wants to overflow in your home, your life, and every area. And even in the darkest times, you shall not be overcome. Embrace this promise, claim it with faith. Declare, Lord, you are my shepherd. Overflow in my life. God doesn't want to just fill you, He wants to overflow in your home, in your life, in every area. And even in the face of adversity, His abundant blessings will not fade away. Embrace the overflowing goodness of God in your life. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. This represents daily blessings. 
When the psalmist in Psalm 23 says, Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. He is declaring that God will be with you every day. It's a daily blessing. Goodness and mercy are present in your life every single day. On Monday, there's a blessing. On Tuesday, there's a blessing. On Wednesday, there's a blessing. On Thursday, there's a blessing. On Friday, there's a blessing from God. On Saturday, there's a blessing from God. On Sunday, every day of your life, mercy and goodness will be with you, guiding you, protecting you, and blessing you. This represents daily provision in your life. The Psalm 23 concludes by saying, And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. It represents the promise of eternity. The text tells you that you will be in God's house forever. You will find comfort in this good shepherd who watches over you, guides you, and ensures that you lack nothing. You can declare, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. You will not lack in your home. You will not lack because God will overflow in your storehouses and overflow in your life. Take hold of this word, this promise, this blessing, this gift from God in your life. I want to offer a special prayer for you. These were the verses of Psalm 23, and I explained each verse. Share it with a friend who may not fully understand the meaning of Psalm 23. This video will help you and others better comprehend the significance of each verse. In this very moment, I want to pray the prayer of Psalm 23. If you can, close your eyes and focus on God because we are going to pray in this moment. Leave your prayer requests in the comments, and I will present each prayer request to God, asking the Father to grant you what you need, what you require, and what you desire. Let's pray, let's enter into this covenant of prayer in this moment. Let us pray, Holy Spirit of God, Almighty Lord who created the heavens and the earth, you are our shepherd, and we shall not want. Lead us beside still waters, guide us gently, and provide for us. You are the faithful shepherd, you are the Almighty Lord, and I want to lift up the life of every woman listening to me. I want to present the life of every man listening to me in this moment, God. Perhaps I may not know them personally, but your Spirit knows their hearts. Your Spirit knows their hearts, so come and bless them, come and prosper them, come and bless their lives, the lives of those who are listening to this Psalm 23. May your blessings reach them, granting them victory, preparing a table before them in the presence of their enemies. Anoint their heads with oil, so that their cup may overflow. Overflow, Lord, in their financial lives, in their spiritual lives, in their lives, O Lord. May there be prosperity in their lives because you are their shepherd, and they shall not lack. So, Jesus, we want to exercise our faith in prayer, believing wholeheartedly that you will do the impossible. God, I present the marriage of this woman. Come and bless them. May the blessings of Psalm 23 be upon this marriage. May the blessings of Psalm 23 be upon this company. May the blessings of Psalm 23 be upon this work. Open the doors of employment. Open the doors of financial abundance. Lord, bless this couple who desires to get married. May your blessing, the blessing of Psalm 23, come to meet them so that they may attain this gift, God. For this man and this woman who are unemployed, open the doors of employment because you are our shepherd, and we shall not lack anything. We take hold of every blessing. We take hold of every victory that is recorded in Psalm 23. We take hold, 
Lord, of all the blessings declared in Psalm 23. May this Psalm 23, Lord, be fulfilled in our lives so that we may experience the prosperity of the sheep in the arms of the Good Shepherd. God, you are our refuge and strength. You are the faithful shepherd. In the name of Jesus, I present each prayer request, and may the blessing of Psalm 23 rest upon each prayer request. May you, Lord, prosper, honor, exalt, and grant your victory in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. We ask and we thank you in advance. Amen. Thank God for the victories of Psalm 23 in my life, in the name of Jesus. If you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, please subscribe. God bless you abundantly. A big hug.